Hi, it's Brad from Trans Audio Group. I'm here with Joe Ciccarelli. We're just talking about ATC, and Joe, how did you get started with ATC? I can't, can't remember. Well, uh, hearing ATC in a number of studios, including Blackbird, La Fabrique in France, mm -hmm. uh, I've known the brand for many, many years. But my what really got me hooked was when you loaned me those 25s when I was working with the Killers in oh, Vegas. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's and right. I, I remember the day that you brought them in, and I won't say what we were using before, uh, but I remember we were in the middle of guitar overdubs and we put the speakers up and within five seconds of listening, the mid-range and the phase coherency was so spot on that I remember instantly getting up off my chair going, oh, I have to go out and move that microphone a quarter of an inch because <laughs> it doesn't sound right. No, I mean, I, I was fantastic. shocked how I could just see right through the guitar and I could hear the little bit of phasing that was happening with the microphones and knew that I had to go out and That's move perfect. it. So I was I was hooked then and then when you secretly told me that there was a bigger model coming out, I was like, yeah. okay, let me hear that. And yeah. I remember a few months later, the 45s came over to me at Sunset Sound. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was it was done deal with a matter of an hour. I was like, yeah. that's the one for me because the the size of the sound, the uh, excitement of it, the accuracy of it. Um, I have actually, yeah, it's been so it's been two and a half years. I have two pair, yeah, and it's uh, probably a dozen albums later. <laughs> so, Joe, tell me about some of the projects you've done on ATCs that you're really proud of. Well, since getting the speakers, it's been two albums for Morrissey, one wow. at La Fabrique and one at Sunset Sound, and, and, and in Rome we did an album, uh, an Alanis Morissette album. I even actually remixed some John Denver tracks of wow. all things wow. that I got called for. Cool. And then there's projects like The Wonder Years and Vance Joy and so many other things that um, the speakers have really, really helped me with. So, uh, we were just talking about the 20s that yeah. uh, you were kind enough to get me a set of 20s in Montreal and right. I was a little reluctant to rely on them not having the mid-range because yeah. to me the 45 and the 25 and all the models the secret of the sound is it's in that mid-range mid yeah, it's yeah. so smooth it doesn't get fatiguing it just is you can see through it you know right. it's phase accurate it's pretty amazing so without that I was kind of nervous to rely on the 20s yeah but I, I gotta say that all the decisions that were made on those speakers when I got the tracks back to LA the decisions of guitars and drums and vocals anything mid-range focused was just so spot on it was pretty remarkable it was almost to the point of like oh now do I have to buy a set of 20s as well <laughs> as 45s <laughs> yeah that's cool well you know the goal is try I know when I talked to Billy Woodman who's the inventor of all these drivers and these speakers, and ask him about it, he says, well, speakers should all sound the same. The only thing that should change is gain, how loud they play, and how much low end. Mm -hmm. And so you can build a speaker that's scaled to the room, right? If you're in a tiny little room, you don't need a lot of low end. Right. If you're in a big room, you need a lot, like over at Blackbird, where exactly. we have double 15s. Yeah. So he, that was his goal. And, he, and when I t talked to him about how did he get the inspiration for sort of his character and the feel of ATCs, how did he think about that? Because he was friends with the guys at CAF and all that. Mm -hmm. And been in the business a long time. And he said, well, I always like the fidelity of British loudspeakers, yes. but I like the dynamic range of American loudspeakers. Mm -hmm. So trying to find a way to have the dynamic range and the fidelity was his vision. Interesting. So, so his first speaker he did was a 50. And then he's gone down and up from there. And mm -hmm. he always uses the 50 as his reference. Hmm. That's his thinking. Yeah. And so that mid-range dome has been a great product. Now I see it, a mid-range dome showing up in other things, but I don't. they don't sound the same to me. Yeah. yeah. You know, no, but they, they don't. Yeah. yeah but, but they work great in this. And I, yeah. I think you, you among all people, because you just have this really uncanny ability to ret record guitars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a hard thing to do, you know, and I think there's only a few people that really excel at it. And mid-range seems like that's the game. That's the key, of course, absolutely. Yeah. And no, and it's interesting, you know, for, for me it's always been that. Because I think the, the, 
little old engineer guy that trained me was all about the oritone. And yeah, it was yeah. all about getting all your mid-range frequencies from Just clashing like. and conflicting. So that's kind of where I learned. And then, as you know, it was 10, 15 years of using tannoys, yeah. which are fantastic Very in the mid-range. However, yeah. when you turn them up, the distortion gets a little harsh, a little difficult to take. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But there is something about that mid-range, the coaxial driver, that yeah. is pretty impressive. And I spent 10, 15 years trying to move on to something else because of the distortion and couldn't find anything that came even close for me until I heard the 25s and the 45s. I remember when we were talking about a time I'd be over at Sunset and I could just see you were really nervous about not working with your tannoys that you were had made so many good records on and were so comfortable with. I'm sure it's kind of like an anchor, right? Mm -hmm. That you feel like this is my space. Yep. Now I got to venture off into some other land with something I'm not sure about. But yeah, it's really great. Well, I'm so glad they're working for you. No, it's fantastic. And the, the thing I noticed right away, which is not what I expected to notice, is that my mixes became more exciting. The speakers pushed me to take more risks, to be more dramatic with the mixes. I thought it would kind of be about accuracy and balance of frequencies, but the odd thing is that it became more about performance and emotion, hmm. which um, was, was the, the greatest gift of all. Yeah, that's really cool. That's a really cool thing. And do you think that's because the distortion's low on the speaker, or do you think that's just, just the think balance? I just think it's the balance of, of frequencies that I'm I'm not afraid to push things a bit more. And it might have been that I, in the past I was fighting a speaker and didn't quite realize it. I thought maybe I had it down in terms of frequency uh -huh. spectrum, but I, maybe uh -huh. uh, you know I'd push into it and the uh -huh. distortion would make me back off. I'm not really sure, uh -huh. but I just know that when I grab something and push it, it, I, I can get it to a point where it feels exciting and over the top and everybody's jumping up and down and it's not out of the mix or it's not painful and not it's been a godsend. Well, I know for the guys at ATC because we talk about it, where it's so gratifying to hear the work you're doing on these speakers because, you know, for, for the company and for all of us involved in it, we don't feel like we're selling some, uh, you know, high performance race car. We feel like we're building a tool that people mm -hmm. need to use to work. Well, and, and it's a pretty high performance one, I must say, given given the options that are out on the market. It's in the Ferrari League. Yeah, well, that's cool. <laughs> well, they're, they are, we talk about this, how cool it is to hear work that you do back on the speakers and feel like that they've made a contribution to your work. So. Oh, man, that's, that's fantastic. Well, well, thanks so much, Joe. Oh, I really appreciate you talking to me. No, absolutely. All right, we'll see you later. Great. Take care.